All right, now that we've completed forces and fields, we want to move into the next major unit of physics 30, and that is going to be the unit on electromagnetic radiation. So this is quite a large unit. There's a significant amount of content to cover, but we will take it slowly and methodically. The two big things that we're going to look at is we're going to look at something called the wave model of light, and we're also going to look at the particle model of light, and then we're also going to tie the two models together and see how they both work in tandem with electromagnetic radiation. So the first part of this unit, which is where we're going to spend the bulk of our time, we're going to look at things like the speed of electromagnetic radiation, propagation of electromagnetic radiation, reflection, refraction, diffraction, interference, total internal reflection, and Snell's law. So what we want to look at for the next little while is we want to look at the wave nature of electromagnetic radiation. So with that said, let's get into it. So the first thing is, what is electromagnetic radiation? And we're going to talk about that. Well, it just happens to be radiant energy, and it happens to travel outwards from its source in all directions. So there's no particular direction for EMR to travel. It'll want to go outwards in every possible direction. So, you know, if I have a source here, my electromagnetic radiation is just going to go out in all directions. There is no preferred direction. Now, in terms of electromagnetic radiation, or EMR for shorthand, there's many different types. A lot of them you are very much well acquainted with. The one that you are most likely acquainted with or very well versed in is visible light. So this is what we see kind of on an everyday basis. If you've been to a doctor, a dentist, and an x-ray, x-ray is a type of EMR. Gamma rays, you shouldn't have really had any exposure to that. That is a type of EMR. Cosmic rays, these are high energy particles that shower onto the Earth's atmosphere from out in space. The, while you're watching this, you're being bombarded by those right now. Those are also electromagnetic. Those are also different forms of electromagnetic radiation. We have microwaves that you use to cook food, sometimes used in communications. UV rays from the sun, infrared given off by objects that are hot, and radio waves. Like these are all different types of electromagnetic radiation that we can study. So of course, I just listed different types of EMR. And the question that can come up is, well, how do we distinguish between them? Well, we look at three sort of properties. First of all, we want to look at their source. Certain sources are more likely to produce different types of EMR. For example, we look at the sun. We know the sun produces visible light. We know it produces UV radiation. That's what we get burned with, and that's what, that's what the ozone layer tries to protect us against. We also know it produces heat or infrared radiation. And then we also look at these two characteristics that are kind of relate that are related to one another. We can look at the frequency of the radiation or we can look at the wavelength. So we want to remember that frequency is the number of cycles per unit time. So how many complete waves come at you every single second? Or we also can look at that wavelength, which is going to be that distance between adjacent points. So for example, if I have an electromagnetic wave, it looks a bit like this. So that distance between successive crests or successive troughs, this is going to be my wavelength. And then when we talk about frequency, we're talking about how many complete wave cycles approach you every second. So for example, this is a complete wave cycle, which is one wavelength. Frequency is counting how many complete waves are approaching you at every second. A common question that gets asked frequently on exams is how do we produce electromagnetic radiation? So there's two conditions. First of all, we need acceleration and we need charged particles. So it's through the acceleration of charged particles. That's the key. And keep in mind, if something is undergoing circular motion, it is accelerating. That's a common thing they try to get you on on the diploma exam. So for example, if you have a proton undergoing circular motion, it's accelerating, the proton's charged, that will produce electromagnetic radiation. That's also something that we're going to have to talk about in the next unit when we look at the atomic models. So for us, all electromagnetic waves in a vacuum, and that's the important point here is that we're dealing with vacuum, they travel at the speed of light. So for us in physics 30, speed of light 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second is more than enough for us that we need. We don't need it to be more precise. So to recall from physics 20 as well, there's a couple of relationships we need you to remember. First of all, frequency and period, they are related by that inverse relationship. And we also have the universal wave equation that we would learn in physics 20, this speed equals frequency times wavelength. 
Now, because we're dealing with electromagnetic waves, we're just going to do a small adjustment to this equation. We're just going to change V for C, the speed of light, since all our electromagnetic waves in vacuum travel at the speed of light. So we're going to use C equals F lambda, just for the time being. So we already talked about types of electromagnetic radiation. As I mentioned, we could classify them based on things like frequency and wavelength. We can also classify it by energy, which is something we'll discuss a little bit later. But all of these different types of electromagnetic radiation, these form what's known as the electromagnetic spectrum. So here's kind of an electromagnetic spectrum here. And you'll notice the one that we have a lot of familiarity with, visible light. You'll notice that it's not actually a huge part of the electromagnetic spectrum. It's something that we're very familiar with, but it's a teensy tiny part of the entire EMR spectrum. Now, with the electromagnetic spectrum, you kind of have to know broad strokes where the boundaries are for these different types of radiation. Now, we usually try, when we ask questions about this on exams, we try not to ask you about regions where they overlap, because that's not really fair to ask you. We try to make it very obvious which type of radiation we're asking for. You know, if we ask for something on the order of meters, we're, tr we're clearly trying to get at radio waves. If we're asking something like 10 to the minus 12, 10 to the minus 13 meters, we're trying to get at gamma rays for you. So you do have to know the order of the electromagnetic radiation spectrum. For the visible part of the spectrum, there's no clear cutoffs because you're going to have colors blending into one another and then you're going to kind of have them fading out. For us, as sort of a rough guideline. If you can remember that violet's at around 400 nanometers, and then you can remember reds at about 700 nanometers. So we could say visibles from about 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers. If you can remember that, you're gonna do really well. The other thing you wanna be mindful of is placing things like UV and IR. Violet here is at this 400 nanometers. So we're gonna want ultraviolet near that. So we're decreasing wavelength as we go to the right. So we should expect ultraviolet to be somewhere in that less than 400 nanometer range. So you know, you're talking like 100, 200 type nanometers. So you'll notice that violet, ultraviolet, they kind of are paired together. Whereas for infrared and red, well, we have that key word in there. We got the word red, and it's going to be after red. So we're looking in like the 800 plus nanometer range. If you can kind of remember that infrared goes after red, you're going to be doing really well with all this stuff. So those are, that's our main thing with the color spectrum or the visible light spectrum. If you can remember it's between 400 to 700 nanometers, you're doing well. Remember that infrared and red go together, violet and ultraviolet go together. In your notes, I also have a table that's taken from the Pearson Physics textbook. So this is the standard physics textbook for physics 20 and 30. So it just goes through different types of electromagnetic radiation. It talks about how they're commonly produced, some known characteristics we have of that radiation. And when we talk about problems, we're talking about like risk or potential issues. Like for example, UV light causes sunburns and it has been linked to like melanoma. So this is kind of the chart here. Do you have to memorize that? Absolutely not. This is just more for your information to kind of give you a nice, really complete overview of what's going on with electromagnetic radiation.